Cottage and welcome back to Wales. Lovely to have you here. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all having a good week. Uh, today I have decided I'm going to clean out the pretty stove. I'm not sure if I've done this video before but I have done a video about sweeping, cleaning out the flue on the chimney in the other room but I don't know if I've done this one. Now in the other room we have a pipe that goes like that and like that so that always needs cleaning out because it gets loads of soot on it. But in this one, we have a straight up and down pipe. Now, I use this every day, most of the day, from about 12 o'clock usually until I go to bed. I put a log in before I go to bed, so it stays lit until about probably about 1 o'clock in the morning. So we do get quite a lot of smoke going up that chimney and a lot of stuff that will need cleaning out. So I try to clean it out probably every month if I can. Um, if the weather's good and if I'm in the mood, really. So I thought today I'd do a video for you, show you cleaning it out, and then I'm going to cook on it. And I'm going to make a split pea vegetable soup today, chunky vegetable soup. And I thought I'd do the recipe with you, show you me cleaning out the log, the log stove, and uh, see what else we end up doing. So I need to have the door open, so I thought that I'd clean the sweep, I'd sweep the flue first with the door open, show you what I'm doing, show you around the stove, let you have a little look around, see how you clean it, see all the different points in it, and uh, yeah, then you'll have a good idea of how easy it is to do. If I can do it, excuse me, if I can do it, anyone can do it. So that's my philosophy, is that if I can show you that I can do it, then it's easy for anyone to do it really, because I don't know a lot about anything really. <laughs> So yeah, that's what I thought I'd do today, clean out the log stove and let you have a little look around. So I'll turn you around and we'll get on with the video. Right, so I've noticed in the last sort of six months or so, there's been a lot of interest in these stoves. And people have been commenting on my videos and asking me to do more recipes because they've either bought them or considered buying them and they want to know how efficient they are. Now, I love my stove. I absolutely love this stove. Um, I am so pleased that we bought it. It was the, one of the best investments that we've ever done. Um, you get a nice little log space underneath uh, for storing all your logs. That is the oven. That is the fire box. That is the fire bucket where you get all your ash at the bottom. You can load the fire from the top, which I try to do when it's, um, I'm getting it ready to light it. I don't open the top again then after that. All the wood goes in that way. This plate here. This is your second plate. This one's a colder plate than that one to cook on. This is hotter because it's above the firebox. This one's slightly cooler. Um, and I have these two fans and they're on all day and they pump the, an awful lot of heat out. We open the door and then that heats the whole house and we get a good tepid heat um, in a three bedroomed house. Um, and it's a really good stove if you want to heat the whole house. Once you get the heat built up in this room, um, you can then get the heat circulating around the whole house. So as I say, this is the firebox. This grill at the bottom does come out. This lifts up. And this lifts out. So there's your tray. So it does get a bit clogged up in the grooves here, so it will need a bit of a brush out. So as I say, this is your firebox. We've taken the grill out. We take this block out here. This one. There's one fire brick. So there's one back one. That comes out second. Here's the other one. Now you need to do this because firstly, you need to check that everything's okay with your stove because at the back there's the metal place. Now you don't want any cracks in this metal. It's very tough, but I just like to check it over just to check that everything's okay. Your bricks do get broken from time to time and that's fine. There's no problem with that. You can still use them, but you can get replacements. I think they're just, I think they're just ordinary standard replacements. So you take this one out by pulling it forwards. You take this one out by pulling it forwards, let it drop in, lift out, and then we do the other side. Thank you. 
right okay so uh, this is the pipe that's the flue this is your second um, cooler side this here is your hatch your normal hatch for sweeping the flue in there um, but I've got this plate here that the installer fitted for me to make it easier for me to sweep because of this because this is like a baffle plate and it sits flat like that when the fire sits flat like that when the fire's lit and when you open it's upright like that now I didn't like the idea of getting my brush stuck so he fitted this hole for me here so I can bypass this use this and then stick a feather duster through this bit to clean this out and I do have my feather duster to this one it's a very old feather duster but it's very bendy so it means I can get up here in the baffle plate and get all that nicely cleared up. Now it does get very clogged up in here. I'll just get a torch. I don't know whether you can see but there's a ledge here. See that ledge? Now your soot will come down the chimney up here, come down there and then down there inside it goes down to the bottom and that is below your oven. So if we lift this one off, I'll show you what's under here. This is the top of the oven. And this is that vent. Push it in to open it. Pull it out to close it. Um, I use that a lot, an awful lot. It does get clogged up with soot, as you can see. So you do need to keep that clean to stop it sticking. Um, I haven't had to put any oil or anything on it yet, but as you can see you get a lot of dust build up on here. So I just like to brush everything down the bottom there and then we'll clean that out last. So push all that down. It's easier if you work as you go, rather than bring a load of soot down and add to the problem, clean out what you've got so far um, and then that easier. So in here, I don't know if you can see, but there's the other side of your oven. So just get your brush in and give that a sweep. You may need to get your hand in, you will get your hands dirty. That's just part of having the stone. Right, so in the oven, this is your place, the bottom place of the oven. Now, put your screwdriver in, lift it up comes out. We'll have a bit of soot on it, it will need a sweep. But uh, this now can be brushed out. So I'm going to put the uh, brushes up the chimney. I'll show you what I'm doing. You do occasionally get a bit of dust in here. Give it a brush. It's not going to affect your food. But uh, yeah, just give that a sweep in there, get rid of anything. But there's the main build-up of soot. Um, as you can see, it's a build-up of soot on there, but that'll come out with the um, brush and the feather duster. That's the word I'm looking for. You'll be able to clean that out with the feather duster. So we'll get in there. So I'll just put the camera around another way and we'll have a look. So this is my new warming shelf. I built this myself. Um, been very handy. It slots out. Been drying herbs on it. I dried my washing on it last night. That's been very handy. Right, these nuts just unscrew. Like that. Then there's another one. And that comes off. This gets very black. I don't know why, but it does. And that comes off. So I'll put my nuts back on so I don't lose them. Now I live in a very damp place. I live in Wales. It get a lot of rain here. We've had a lot of rain the last three months. And it gets very dirty in here, mainly because of the rain, not because I'm using wet woods, because all my wood's dry. But uh, it does get very wet. But there's not a lot of soot on this pipe. So it must just be gravity that brings it down. 
So I put my brush in here and then send it up the chimney and uh, I put my feather duster down that way. Right, this is my brush set. I've got a set of fiberglass ones. That's your pin that will fit onto uh, your drill. I've got seven poles. This is the brush. And as I say, that's the pin that fits onto your drill. So we'll just get that set up and get that sorted out. And I'll show you how to use them. So I'm using my old DeWalt drill. No idea what model it is, but it's very old. Um, it's about four years old now, so I put the pin on the end and then this is my brush on my pole. You can detach the brush, but I leave mine on the pole so I know where it is. So you line up your pin and your hole. You line up that little button and you put that on. You do need to keep it up wd 40 would Make sure you can open it. Um, right, then you attach it to your drill. So you put your brush up in the hole. And give it a spin. Now, you could do some plastic over it. sure you can see the button attach it onto the bottom of your pole again click it in make sure it's tight you can do a lot of this yourself you don't really need the drill but it's a lot easier of dust. In that pot. So I'm going to have to get my hand up. and then light in the fire when it can get the poles off. Let's have a look how much muck there is, eh? Right, let's have a look. It's not actually too bad, not a lot came down. I'm very happy. That must mean that we're burning a good dry fire, um, even with all the wet weather that we've had. So there was just that loose bit uh, that came down with the brush. But other than that, I'm pretty impressed with that, really. Now, you can, if you're sweeping it from here, you can pretty much enclose all the dust, which is even better than 
my hole here I just don't like the idea of going up where that plate is because if you keep this closed like that you really only got your dust coming out here so there's not really much difference I actually think my hole may be better because the dust falls straight down but uh, yeah so let's I'll just show you what I'm going to do to clean that out with my feather duster right now I'm going to put my feather duster in here now and I'm going to put it in here and that's going to help to bring all the dust down in here see it's cleared it's cleared all that ledge now in there right this side's all clean now this side's all clean now I need to put my hole back on there cover that hole back up now all the mess as you can see all the mess is now in here so what you need to do now is just brush it all into a pile and scoop it out with a shovel or a piece of paper and then this one in here you can just pull the drawer out once you've got all that soot in that drawer so it's really easy to clean it's a really good stone this is a bit long-winded make sure it all you want to make sure all the metal's clean really because that's what prevents it from heating up if it's dirty that's probably all the clinker that we've had today which isn't bad market day again and it's raining it's always raining on market day a lot of this is to do with the fact that we're in Wales it's very wet here so everything gets wet um, my wood has been drying since like early la since mid last year, so it's definitely not wet wood. And it was swept after the last fire we had in May. So you can see you do need to keep up with the housekeeping on it, partly to stop it rusting. So you can check it over, check there's no splits in it because um, you don't want any splits in the metal at the back and you want to keep it healthy so you'll stay healthy because what you don't want is to be breathing in fumes and you know when it's getting time to sweep it because it'll get a bit more smoky right so it was definitely worth doing that is all that black and everything is the sum total of what's come out the fire so it'll be a lot cleaner I've put the plate back in the oven now all under there is clean all in there is all nice and clean now and brushed out. There's a few bits of dust left in, but I'm not too bothered about that. So that's all ready for cooking. That side's all clean. That side's pretty much clean. I could get the hoover and get all that dust out, but you know, I'm going to light the fire in a minute, so I'm not that fussed. Just need to put all the fire bricks back around the side. So we'll just do that together. I'm going to put the bricks back on the side and on the back. Now, because this one's broken, I'm going to put this one on the end. I've got a little metal piece here, you have to clip them underneath. And then you slide them along. Like that. Okay? You see, you can wedge that in now. This is the last one. So that's one side done. This one's broken as well. It must be too heavy handed with the wood. Never mind. I will replace them at some point. That's my fault, not the stove. Right, so we've got all our bricks in, apart from one. 
thing down again now because you've got more brick dust in it. I think I will get the hoover just for that last bit. So the last brick to go in is this one and it fits under the lip here, this last brick. And then you want to put your grate back in. Now I would say if all you do in the month when you're cleaning um, is give it a dust, take this out and take that bottom brick out and clean out the bottom. Um, and that will just keep you a nice efficient fire because otherwise you lose a lot of the, oh, the grill. And um, you need to push this one back up now so that they meet. But there's quite a couple of gaps just here, at the back here, and at the back over there, along here. So you do really need to keep them dust free for a nice efficient fire. But that's pretty much it. I'm going to empty this tray which is everything that's come out the fire and uh, I'm going to get the fire lit and start my soup Right, okay, so we're down in the kitchen part of uh, the room and I thought I'd show you a selection of things that I use on my stove Now, this is the main one that I use and this is my Dutch oven um, it's a brilliant, a brilliant pan, absolutely brilliant. It's cast iron, it's quite a deep pan. I can make casseroles, I can make soup, I can make bolognese, I can make curry. Um, I even use it in the oven and put potatoes in and cook my baked potatoes in it because this acts as an, acts as an oven. So inside you've got to create a mini oven and then you put popping it, this will heat up really, really hot. Then you're popping it in the oven um, and then you can use it then to cook your baked potatoes. Also when I'm doing a casserole or um, something like a bolognese that I want to cook over a long period, sorry, that I want to cook over a long period of time, I will heat the pan up on the top of the stove and then with all the ingredients in, I'll start cooking it and then I'll pop it in the oven and it'll finish cooking in the oven. So I highly recommend one of these. They can be quite expensive, about £40 if you buy them second hand. This is a vintage one. I got this free um, off my local swap shop. It's always worth looking out on Marketplace on Facebook. So we're putting it down because it's heavy. Um, it's always worth looking on Marketplace on Facebook to see if you can find anything. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend cast iron pans. Cast iron pans for anything. I've got a big massive pan, a Le Creux flat pan that I bought in Sainsbury's. Um, and I can make risotto in this and egg fried rice. I can also uh, do meat in it. So yeah, I can also put it in the oven because my oven's big enough for it to go in. So when you are buying, when you are wanting to buy one, one of the things I would recommend is that you think what you want to do in it. Now at my oven on my stove, on my pretty stove, is the same width as my ordinary oven, but um, it's not as high as an ordinary oven, but it is the same width. It's 51 centimetres by I think 25 centimetres. Or 30 centimeters that way now the only difficulty I have is you don't have a shelf option and um, there's nowhere to fit a shelf in um, I don't know whether they sell something that you can use but what I tend to do is if I've got my stock pot in the oven this blue one then I'll put something on the top of it and that kind of sorts that out so I can do an apple crumble I can do baked potatoes and a casserole all in the one oven all at the same time and forget about it the oven's deep enough the oven is um, as deep as a normal oven so I can get pretty much I could put cook a whole three course dinner on that stove which I have done and I have filmed a video of that for you um, and I can leave it go and get on with my day go and get on with my jobs go back check on it from time to time and then cook it you, uh, it's all cooked the other thing I do is I go out looking around thrift shops. A lot of you know how much I love going to charity shops. And I found these yesterday for a pound each. I was so chuffed. I was really, really chuffed. I got three of them. I got these two. And I got this one, which is a little milk pan, which I can make my porridge in. Now, I find on this stove that um, you don't want something with a thick copper rim. This one on the back actually says that it's for a solid fuel stove. It's only got a very thin copper rim. 
These ones I've got, you, you can tell the difference, have got a thick copper rim. Now they take an eternity to heat up on this stove. They're great on the halogen oven, on the halogen stove, um, which is electric. They're brilliant for that. But for cooking on the stove, you want something with a simmer, slow, slimmer, excuse me, copper bottom. And that will be more useful to you. It'll heat up a lot quicker um, and you won't be waiting around for your food. Because we wasted half an hour the other day for the pan to heat up to do mashed potato cooking in one of these. I would highly recommend if you're looking for pans in the second hand shop, look for them with a thin copper rim or no copper rim at all. I find vintage pans are brilliant because they were more made for uh, cooking on wood or coal. So I do have, they're not washed, so excuse the dirt. But I found these in the charity shop for a pound each as well. I've got a wooden handle, which is great. Um, it doesn't conduct the heat like a metal handle does. Um, but these are great because they don't have any bottom on them at all. Uh, like this one. So if you're looking around the charity shops, look for something like that. Um, and they cook really quick. I can heat mashed potato up in 20 minutes in one of these, but in the other one it took half an hour just to heat the pan. So yeah, I'd highly recommend them. And they go in the dishwasher. If you are also looking, be careful of plastic candles because it does melt. I've got a pan and it's got plastic candles on it. I've also got a stock pot with plastic handles. I can't put them in the oven. I learnt that the hard way. It melts the handles. Um, and it also makes it extremely hot for picking them up. So you can use them on the top, just be very careful again. If you're going to use them, use them on the cooler side because the handles do get very hot and they do melt. So yeah, I, even though I'm happy with this one because of the bottom, I've just realised it's got a plastic handle. So for porridge I'm sure it'll be fine because I cook that slow. But uh, just be careful with the handles because they do get very hot and they have a tendency to melt. So especially on the modern pans, they're just not built for this sort of stove. They're built for gas and electric. They're not built for wood. So yeah, I'm very happy with these. These have a little lip on the side of them as well for pouring things out. So it'll be a lot easier for, get, for pouring out liquids and things. So yeah, I'm very happy with my pans for a pound. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do today. Also, you will need a little table or something at the side of your stove. I've tried all sorts of things at the side of mine and I haven't come up with a solution yet. But my kitchen is sort of three, four metres away from the stove, maybe. Yeah, say three metres away from the stove. And I have to carry hot pans from the stove up to this end of the kitchen to serve the tea. So just be mindful of that where you are going to place your stove because... Uh, yeah, you might find that you're going to have to have something at the side of your uh, stove to be able to use to put your pans and things on. So that I would be careful of that. So I'm just waiting for my kettles to heat up. When my kettles have heated up, I'm going to make the soup. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cook it separately. I'm going to do my split peas in a separate pan, cook them for an hour on the top. You see, I've been waiting for winter to be able to do this soup because I don't like using dried food on the electric stove because it takes far too long. I did have one of those uh, stock pots, but I went through two, they broke, I used them too much. And I think, well, I've got enough heat coming from this stove, I can cook my split peas on there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my split peas in one pan and then in the this casserole dish, the blue one I've just shown you, I'm going to do the soup. Right, so I thought while I'm down this end of the kitchen, I'll just sort my split peas out. So this is one and a half cups. One and a half cups of split peas. Now I know it's a lot, but I like them. It's a good source of protein. Keep them in these plastic tubs. These are great. These are old Hellman's mayonnaise tubs that I got from the cafe. And I keep everything lovely and fresh. I've written on the bottom what they are. And I keep them in the drawer. Right, so let's go down the stove, put some water in this, and we'll get this ready. Right, so there's our pan. there. 
put your handle away um, from the stove so it's easier for you to pick up and you can see through there you can see the orange light that is where you want to place your pans because that's where the heat's going to come out so try and keep your pans on that I always try to put my kettle on that as well excuse the noise and these I just keep these on the stove in case I need water really this has been very handy by the way to any of you who've been following me for a while I got these in the charity shop the thrift shop and I got seven or eight of them for uh, three pound I think he charged me and these are great I've just got them on this expanding rail on the top here and uh, they're really handy and as well I just think all these things conduct more heat and just increase the output of your stove so let's check in there and see if it needs any wood I put some oak in before nope I think that's fine absolutely fine it's just roasting right so I'll just get the rest of my ingredients and I'll be back in a minute Right, so I've got most of my ingredients. I've got some carrots and some parsnip. I've got some apple, eh, not apple, potato. Got some potato. And in there, I've got leek and onion. So that's what we want first. Got my pan. My split peas are cooking nicely at the back there. New pan's working really well. Didn't take long to heat up at all. So they're going to need about 45 minutes, I think some more water in Ooh. right in this one we're going to add some oil I don't like a lot so the first thing I'm going to add is my leeks and my onion I heated the pan up first and leave them to sweat down a bit I'm going to add a bit of water so leave them for a few minutes and then we'll come back. I think I'll just add the garlic while I'm here. I'm using this one today. I'm using a powdered garlic. Pop some of that in. I like quite a bit. It's good for antibacterial stuff for this time of year. Which is what you want. And I'm going to add my mixed herbs. I've just got this one. To buy in Tesco. And about a tablespoon. Now all that can mingle. Right, we'll come back when they've um, softened a bit. Okay, so they're, they're softening nicely. So what I've just added, I added some brown and white mustard seeds and a teaspoon, a level teaspoon of horseradish sauce. You don't have to add the horseradish sauce, that's optional, but I thought that I would have that as a bit of a boost. The garlic's in there as well. It can really smell the horseradish. It smells delightful. They're cooking nicely. So now to that, I'm going to add my root vegetables. I've got carrot and parsnip and I've got potato. Mix all that together. Now we're going to add our water and our stock. So I'm going to fill it up so that it covers the vegetables because they're all going to soften down go nice and mushy this is why you have a kettle on the boil all day right, so that'll be enough in there and there's enough for me for a cup of tea now that smells delicious I'm not adding salt because it's got leeks and onion in it and garlic and they can add a bit of saltiness to it as well. I'll add some garlic to my, must, my split peas and to any of you who've been here a while you know I love this stuff. It's a yeast extract. I get it in little. 89p. Also contains salt. 
But just be aware that if you're adding things that have salt, you probably won't need to add salt. And I'm going to add some to my split peas. And that will just flavour the peas as they cook. Now they've started softening a bit. And I'm also going to add a stock cube. I've got one of these. I'm going to add half to my soup and some into my split peas. It's all mixed in. It probably needs a lid on it. So I'll go and find something to put on. And then we'll mix that one in there. So we need to leave that to cook for about an hour and let all of the vegetables cook down till they're nice and soft and then we'll add the split peas and then I'll just keep it in the oven until I'm ready to serve and I might buy some chicken and do a bit of a chicken casserole with what's left for tea. So see you later. My split peas are ready and my vegetables are cooking down nicely. Now it does need more water, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour all that in there. Pretty much. Yeah, there's not much water in there. So let's scoop some of these in. Do you know, I think I'm just going to throw all that in there. And that is pretty much done. So I'm just going to leave it to cook down another 10-15 minutes and then it'll be ready to eat. Looks lovely. They're all nicely mixed in. Right, here we go. So pop the lid back on. And I'm going to leave that on the cooler side and let it finish off. Time for a cup of tea. So my soup's ready. Got my bowl. More like a stew, I think. It's nice though. Bit of juice, stock. There you go. There we are. Split pea vegetable soup made on the cook stove. So do give it a go. It'd be nice served with a nice piece of chunky bread. And uh, yeah, it's all done. So I hope you enjoy the recipe. Right, so I hope you enjoy the recipe. I hope you enjoy the soup if you try it. It's very nice. Um, I'm looking forward to tasting it. It's one of my favourite soups in winter, but I just don't like cooking the um, dried beans and peas and things on the stove because it takes too long and costs far too much money now so yeah so I'm going to give that a try I'm going to get myself out in the garden go and see the chickens and uh, go and get on with my day I hope you've enjoyed my video do like and subscribe do hit that notification bell and that will tell you when I upload new videos and if you'd like to buy me a coffee or the girls a treat, I do have a Kofi account and the link is in the description bar below. I also have a shop on my Kofi um, page if you're interested in any of my handmade items. items do have a look there and I will send international postage um, if you're willing to pay for tracked and signed postage. So all that said, enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next video at the weekend. So take care, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now. Bye bye.